Well, hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, Buchanan here, Crystal. Uh, coming, uh, we'll be reading from uh, Jeremiah 7. God bless you, God keep you. Mm, the Lord moves and works in a mysterious way. I pray prosperity to y'all. Amen. <clears throat> Jeremiah 7, NIV Bible. False religion is worthless. Wow. Hardhead people is what I would like to entitle this. <laughs> Hardhead people. Hardhead people, including myself. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who came through these gates to worship the Lord. This is the Lord Almighty. The God of Israel says, reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord. This is the temple of the Lord. This is the temple of the Lord. <laughs> I love that part right there. Verse five, if you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, are the widow and do not shed innocent blood in this place. And if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place in the land. I gave your ancestors forever and ever, but look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Verse nine, will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to buy and follow other, follow other gods? You have not known and then come and stand before me in this house, which burns my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house, which burns my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Woo, God's watching. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made a dwelling for my name and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people of Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, over and over and over and over and over. All these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again, but did you not listen? No, I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name. The temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your ancestors, I will thrust you from my presence just as I did all your fellow Israelites, the people of Ephraim. So do not pray for these people, nor offer any plea or petition for them. Do not plead with them, for I will not listen to you. Do not see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. The children gather wood, the fathers light the fire, and the women knead the dough and make cakes to offer to the queen of heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods to arouse my anger. You want to make God angry. But am I the only one they are provoking, declares the Lord? Are they not rather harming themselves? <laughs> You're not hurting me, he's saying. You're hurting yourself. To their own shame, you look real stupid because you're hurting yourself. Why are you trying to hurt me? Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My anger and my wrath will be poured out on this place, on man and beast, on the trees of the field and on the crops of your land. It will burn and not be quenched. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Go ahead, add your burnt offerings to your other sacrifices and eat the meat yourselves. For when I brought your ancestors out of Egypt and spoke to them, I did not just give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices, but I gave them this command. Obey me, obey me, and I will be your God and you will be my people. Walk in obedience to all my commands. To all I command you, that it, that it may be good and well with you. But they did not listen or pay attention. They don't listen or pay attention. Hardhead people. Instead, they follow stubborn inclinations of their own evil heart. They went backward, not forward. 
from time from the time of your ancestors left Egypt until now, day after day and again and again. I sent you my servants, the prophets, but they did not listen to me or pay attention. They were stiff necked and did more evil than their ancestors. And thus is the reading of the word of Jeremiah. To be hard-headed. Lord, he's been working on me about this right here. Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Come on. When I read this, God put it out my heart. But And when I read it, I, it was powerful because I was like, wow, I see us right there. I see 2018. I see the year 2018. I see 2016, 20, whatever. I see 2018 right now. God keeps telling us to obey him, to do his will. Stop doing and living by our own rules and regulations, but to obey and obey by him. We wait. Instead, we wait until there's murder and shootings and some family members dying, a, a major crisis, lights and floods and, and lightning turn down buildings. Then we want to run to God. Oh, wait a minute. It really is a God. Oh, let me run because I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Oh, God's trying to give, give me a message. Oh, God's trying to tell me something. And we running around like a chicken with his head cut out. I mean, it's so sad. You know, it's so sad that we as a people do that. We hard headed. And then to bring it on home, I know this with me. God has can tell me to do something like get out of that relationship. Don't get in this relationship. Watch this person. Watch that person. This person's not good for you. That person's not good for you. This person's good for you. This person's good for you. But now I become stiff-necked. Oh, you know I'm going to tell on myself. I become sti stiff-necked. I, I, I think I know more than God. And, and, and I go out here and I stumble. And then when I fall, I'm just like you all. Oh, Lord, I messed up. Pick me up. Oh, Lord, what did I do wrong? Oh, Lord, why am I being punished? We fail to, to accept responsibility of our actions. We mess up and then we want God to clear it up and we want to blame God when it's our own fault. When God's telling you to repent and stop doing wrong and to worship him and change your ways and look after the homeless and look after the sick and the widow, he means that. We are so disobedient. We don't care about a lot of other people. All we care about ourselves sometimes. I do the best I can not to be selfish. But yeah, quite often people do. You get selfish and you're thinking about yourself and what's best for you. You put clothes, you put property, you put cars and things before God. And he's not pleased with that. And then he get, when he gets angry and then you get chastised, that means get your butt whooped. Then you, oh, whoa, Lord, what happened? What did I do? Oh, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. But then you turn around and you do it again. And that's what he's talking about. You keep on being disobedient. You're worshiping other gods. You're worshiping cars. You're worshiping money. You're worshiping materialistic things. I'm tired and I'm tired of hearing you. I'm tired of your whining and your complaining. I will not deal with you any longer. And I will pour out my wrath on you. And that's what he's saying. And that's what he's going to do. If we don't change our ways and we don't be obedient to what he's telling us to do and we keep on being wicked and thinking about ourselves and harming other people. Yeah. Watch. I've been around and walking with God a long time. When he say he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Yeah. We talking about that was back in Jeremiah time. But also we talking about in 2018 when he said be obedient. Then he means it now. 2018. Be obedient. Follow him. Stop harming, hurting people. Stop, stop thinking just about yourself and materialistic things. Think about others. And most important, keep God first. But what I want to say is that I've learned is that I do have to take care of myself. We have to take care of ourselves. But we have to, uh, we don't have to sit back and wait for God to send us a mate. And this is for my single people. We don't have to sit back and wait for God. Oh, God's going to send us this uh, special person, this great person. And also, I was listening to a guy on uh, on YouTube, and uh, he's uh, supposed to be a preacher. And he was talking about uh, 10 things women do wrong and seven things women do. And this is what a woman needs to do. And this is how to pick up. And I'm like, I don't get on Facebook and Twitter and social media and tell about the man you want because you basically a sucker and you putting yourself out there. And I'm like, hogwash. 
That is what it is. If you're bleeding, if you are hurting and you don't have any other person to tell your problems to, then by all means, share it on social media so somebody back here. I'm not saying get down to the part of some gritty stuff, time that you want to sleep with 5,000 people and all this type of thing. But to let a person know that, you hard, that you're hurting, uh, maybe you feel like harming yourself or you feel like nobody loves you. You feel like you need a hug. I have a lot of people on my, uh, the reason I disagree with them is that I have a lot of people on my, uh, on Twitter. I have a lot of people on Facebook that often reach out to me and, uh, uh, our audience and say, Hey, I need a hug. Let me see 10 people give me a hug. I don't feel like anybody cares about me. I have people out there talking about they're depressed. You know, and so we have other people, everybody on the page uh, offer suggestions and we say things to people. So by all means, if you're feeling lonely and you feel un unloved, like you made a, a, a bad uh, love mistake, or you falling for the wrong person, share it. You don't have to be gritty with it, but if you feel like it, you can share it and, and get some uh, advice from a lot of people. But God don't tell you. You know, I had to pray about that. When she would say to people talking about it, a lot of women said back, and I'm talking about a woman because I'm a woman. And I'm quite sure men do it too, but whatever. But we'll sit back and we're talking about, oh, God, send me somebody. Oh, God, send me a husband. Oh, God, send me a mate. Send me a man of God. Send me a man that does this and that. And wow, what I had to learn here, because a person walks, if they, if they walk like they're not really saved and they talk like they're not really saved, if they're supposed to be preachers and deacons and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, then by all means, they're not one. Sometimes we get caught up in the clothing, the dress up, the makeup of a person. Oh, they're a preacher. Therefore, oh, they mighty person of God. Let's bow down and worship them and put them on a pedestal. They can't do no wrong. Yeah, they're just a human being. They're a person that's a tool of God. And yeah, it is nice to take it up, give them ultimate respect. But you give respect where respect is due. And if they're not walking godly and they're doing uh, outside things that's not of the Bible, and uh, Jesus <laughs> Jesus would say, you're wrong, then yeah, by all means, call them out on me. And uh, like I said, I had to look at that. And I had to also look at when uh, Ruth met uh, Boaz. Ruth didn't sit back and wait for Boaz to meet her. Naomi sent Ruth. Come on with it now. Naomi sent Ruth and told her to go in there and lay up under and uncover his feet and stuff like that and lay at his feet. So the point I'm making is she went to him. We so busy listening to so many people preaching and telling us how they got all these seminars and all these little sermons. They done dressed up and to pull people in saying what you want to hear, saying the good stuff. And people running in for the good stuff when they should be running into the truth. And that's what Jeremiah 7 is saying. You falsely worshiping God, you worshiping yourself. You're worshiping idols. You're worshiping other people and other things. You're not taking care of the poor. You're not taking care of the widow. You're worshiping foreign guys and, and, and getting under a, a false doctrine. And that's what he's talking about. You're listening to bull is what he's basically saying rather than listening to the truth. Pick up the Bible. One thing I did love when I was going to church, I don't long ago go to church, but when I was going to church, I did love that the pastor would always say, read the Bible for yourself. You rarely hear that in a lot of churches, but I did like it. So I'm learning right now. I'm on that deep, deep path. I'm picking up the Bible. God's telling me, pick up that Bible and read it. And I'm learning to study. I also ran into some people that I thought was, I, I, uh, we were on the same path and I realized we not. So I will not be attending that any longer. I will not be att attending that little, uh, little Bible study thing any, any longer. But like I said, I pray for God because God, if you ask God for a direction, you ask God to show you people for the way they really are, God will do it. And God's telling, let me get back on the path of what I was talking about. When Ruth met Boaz, he was a distant relative. But like I said, she went to him. God don't want us to sit back and wait for our mate, our significant other, our husband to come to us. We have to get out and take the initiative. And first of all, before we do anything, like a lady friend of mine, Deborah, we was just talking and I'm like, I love her because she's loud and she keep it real. Like we were sitting and we was talking. Like she said, you got to know yourself. 
You got to know yourself what you want and what you looking for. And then when you know what you really want, what you will tolerate, what you won't, don't, what you will not tolerate, will not tolerate, then you pursue that person. Then therefore, when somebody's coming to you shooting a line about, they don't want no relationship. Uh, they not sure about themselves. They scared of you. They don't have confidence in themselves. They got something going on. They want to start on with their life over here. Uh, they want to be with multiple women. They want to be with women and men. Hello. Uh, they not sure who they are, what they are, what they want to do. Uh, they don't want to do anything in life. They want a woman to live on. Hello. Same thing, vice versa. Man just want to live on what woman just want to live on a man. Whatever. But Therefore, when all those little things come up and you know, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's how you are. Well, now, nah, oh, I'm sorry. You got the wrong one. Next. Then you'll keep going. You won't wear your heart on your sleeve. You won't waste your time because time is very precious, especially when you're single. <laughs> it's very precious, you know, so you don't want to waste your time. So have it's like having a little menu. And that's what I'm, I'm planning on doing. I'm going to write down. Listening to my friend Deb, I'm going to sit down and write down what direction I'm going in. What, what am I looking for? And then, therefore, I know it when I see it. And they will know me when they see me. So, all that guesswork will be gone. All that wasting time will be gone. So, yeah. And I also will pray. I also suggest that. Pray for that person. Pray for that person. If you, if you think you met that person, pray for them. And be with somebody that will pray with you. I mean, that, that I, I like that too. Be with somebody to pray. I don't know really what your your preference is, but it would be nice to be with somebody. Hey, let's pray together. You know what I'm saying? You know, let's pray about it. Are we, are we compatible? Is, I, is this what God would like? You know what I'm saying? Are we pleased with one another? Is this the real thing? <laughs> Woo! And if not, then hey, bye. I'll see you. You know, I wish you well. But uh, like I said, though, uh, God is mighty and he's awesome. And uh, I'm not going to be doing too much Twitter like I, were, I was. And uh, I'm not going to pop on Facebook. Like I said, when God put it on my heart, I will. Right now, I'm going through some. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm checking out me. I'm getting to know me. I'm staying obedient to God. That's why I keep coming back with these on Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I will keep on doing this. Regardless of whatever happens, I will continue to do this every Tuesday until God says stop. You know, like I said, I'm going to be obedient. You know, I'm hard headed and stiff necked. And yeah, I don't want to do some things. And like I said, but I know that God's saying be obedient. You know, and if you don't believe in yourself, if I don't believe in myself, who else? Which I did, thank God. I had to look at it and I was like, wow, I was kind of ready to give up, which I did. I gave up like my, uh, just a little testimony. I gave up the internet because my bill was high and then God blessed me and somebody came back to me talking about the business and to offer me a business account. So I'm like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, you know, I'm thinking I'm tripping. But then I, I prayed about it and God was like, somebody believes in you. Somebody believes in you. And then you doubting yourself and you doubting what I already told you that you are and what you're going to be. And then you let you allow life to and people around you to, to take and have you be disobedient to me and get rid of them people. And I did. And so, like I said, I don't, I don't, I'm letting go a lot of people. I've already let go a lot of people and I don't break my neck to be around people. And I don't get so lonely that I'll be with anybody. I thank God for the friends that I have. I thank God for the people of uh, 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 confidence that I have in my life. God placed in my life. And like I said, if people are not in your life talking something positive and trying to build you up, then get away from them. You know, I, I tell them, you know, hey, I holler. I have certain days you you associate with them. But as for me and my walk right now, uh, I'm doing what God tells me to do. And other than that, I, I don't have no conversation for anybody. And uh, like I said, I'm, t I'm taking time, too. I'm looking at me. I'm watching my walk. I'm watching what I say. I'm watching what I do. I know people are watching me. But at the same time, I don't come to anybody and I never come to anybody trying to act like I got everything going on and I'm perfect and I'm an angel and I'm Jesus Christ. No, I'm a, just a human being. I'm a black female trying to do the best I can to be obedient to God and do what he wants me to do. 
so that I can have a successful life. And when I say successful, it's not just money grab, but hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, LG&E don't want no thank you. It, it don't pay no bills. The water company don't want no thank you. You got to have some money. You know what I'm saying? And it comes with a job and things like that. So, yeah, responsibilities have to be taken care of. So, like I said, uh, just to be obedient. But like I said, uh, like I said, the title is this is hard head people. You know, we need to be obedient to God and stop listening to false doctrine, false prophecy, false people. You know, get away from them. Man, you around somebody, my little cousin, my cousin Rick, he took and gave me this powerful piece. I ain't lying. I mean, it made me start talking. It was talking about this guy. He was shared, uh, he shared a video and he was talking about how people can be around you and they act like they're your friends, but all along they're envious of you and they're jealous. And they might say some little things like, you come out with a new outfit on and they say, oh, wow, well, that's nice. I'm going to have to go change. Are right, you always coming up? Are right, you always overdressed? You know, darn, uh, darn, uh, I hate hanging with you. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Little, little, little in, in, innuendos like that. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, they real about what they say. Oh, man, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you got a lot of friends. I don't have no friends. Yeah, I don't even want to really be your friend. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Yeah, watch people around you that do it. And I told cuz, I said, man, cuz, that's real. That's real talk. Don't nobody really come out with that. But that's true. I have, I've been around a lot of people like that. And those are the very people this year, 2018. I really let them go. I let a lot of people go in 20, uh, 2017 because I didn't do no New Year's resolution. But I had already shook some. I had a lot of people around me like that. Sitting around one, oh, yeah, you know, uh, 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 oh, yeah, we cool. I'm your friend. Whatever you're going to do, oh, yeah, I got your back. Yeah, you trying to do a little business thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? All along, stabbed me in my back. You know what I'm saying? I got sick. She both been my friend. Went back, didn't tell nobody I was sick. But sitting in my face, smiling and everything. Yeah. But, you know, I ended up down the road. I ended up forgiving her. But you know what? I forgave her. But no, I almost said a cuss word. Yeah, can't hang with me. <laughs> All right, you showed me your true colors. You showed me your true colors. Had nerve enough when I did see her again. Talking about, here's my number. Call me. We're going to hang out. Mm. Mm. I'll take your number. Mm. Mm. I looked at that number. I haven't seen that number since. <laughs> now, nah, boo-boo. You, yeah, I'm a fool once. Now, not twice, no. Not, 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 without a, uh, not without a fight. Believe it. Believe it. You know. Yeah. So, yeah, I learned a lot of lessons. I've been learning. And that's why I said... Mm -mm. I don't have no time. This is this my year. I'm not, I'm not trying to keep on waiting and procrastinating. Oh, I'm going to do this and this is going to happen. And I'm going to get this. Beat. I'm sorry. I'm going to get that started. I'm going to do this. It's going to be. Uh, it's going to be. It's going to be. Uh, it's not. I'm praying. I'm putting everything in God's hands. It's going to be. Uh, it's not. If it's not, then hey, I know how to walk away. I don't have a problem. I'm like Sam Smith. I got to give for goodbye. And on to the next. God, open another door. Open another door, but I'm walking in it. But I don't, all that foolishness and wasting time, nah, not this year. It's it's mine. This is mine right here. This is mine. I'm going to do the things I said with everything in me. Do I die? Do I die? That's my motto, like a muck. Do I die? I don't, I don't have no time wasting. I don't want to be with nobody talking about, are oh, we going to do this? I'm going to go with you. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And the next thing you know, the years in winter done roll back around. And I've been with somebody talking about what they going to do. How much they care about me. What they think about me. How they going to back me up. How they going to they gonna get out of my face. Believe that. Real talk. If you ain't trying to help me go up, help me better fit, better myself, and I'm not trying to help you better your life, and better your situation. I'm not patting you on your back telling you how good you're doing. How I'm proud of you. How I want better for you. What can I do to help you? And me that say it and I'm doing it. Do what I say. Say what I do. If I'm not like that with you, cut me loose. Please cut me loose. Cut me loose and cuss me out. If I ever say 
and I'm your friend and I don't act like a friend to you and I'm not a Christian to you and I'm not caring about the poor and I'm not caring about the widow. I'm not caring about people that are in need, people that are locked up, people that I am bonded, people that are being taken advantage of. If I'm not doing it, call me out on my stuff. But like I said, it's getting long-winded. God bless you. God keep you. It's 434. I'm going to go ahead and upload this up. Then I'm going to kick back give me something to eat. But I thank God for you. God bless you. God keep all of you. You know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of transitions in life. So like I said, a lot of people have to move out of certain areas. I pray that they go into uh, houses and, and, and places where they can prosper. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.